something special inside you. Welcome to GNG Podcast with your host, speaker, best selling author, Chaz Jackson. Yo, what's going on, kings and queens? It's your boy Chaz Jackson coming back to you once again, representing GNG Gift and the Gift. Hey, I personally just want to take the time to tell each and every one of you, thank you so much for giving me your eyes and your ears once again as a great dive deep into some inspiration that I pray will plant like a seed in your mind and assist you in becoming a greater version of yourself. So again, uh, so heartfelt that you're tuning in to episode 44 as we great to get into this theme of unlock yourself. My guy, Eddie Thomason, he's in the house. He's going to bring some amazing value for each and every one of us. So this is going to be an amazing treat, guys. Go ahead and get locked in. And I know that each and every one of you are so ready uh, to get this giant on this episode. But I want to go over the model of this platform. I truly believe that we are all gifted differently to make a difference. And if you are a uh, First time viewer of GNG podcast. This podcast is focused around providing tips and techniques for young males as they strive to grow in personal development. And I take this daily challenge, kings and queens, and I want to encourage you, whoever's listening to me, to take this challenge with me as well of becoming a passionate visionary who is determined to leave a legacy for themselves by adopting unwavering life values and serving others in the area of gifting led by God. So that's the daily challenge I'm taking. If you've been tuning in to GNG Podcast, I know you're taking this journey with us. I know my man, Eddie, is a difference maker and he's on that journey. And I invite you, whoever's new listening to this right now, to come along that journey with us. But let me go ahead and read off this short bio. I'm gonna go ahead and get this, this giant on here. Eddie is from the Maryland, uh, Baltimore area. He's a husband, he's a father, he's a speaker, author, podcast host. And this giant man, he's passionate to empower youth and young adults to shed self-limiting beliefs, to pursue a life that they are passionate about living and being intentional about serving their generation and also the next generation to come. And he is here to shine his light on G and G live stream <laughs> podcast. Are you ready to get it, King? Let's go. I'm so excited <laughs> to be here, Chaz, man. This hey. is gonna be so dope. I have to be here. I mean, in the, on the eastern coast or, or eastern shore here, it's uh it's it's basically nine o'clock at night. And yeah, I know uh, I've still got energy. So I don't know about you, but I'm still hype as heck. So I'm excited to give these people some heaven right now, bro. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, that's it. That's it. That's it. And again, man, thank you so much for for uh, taking your time out. I know it's a little later on the East Coast, but hey, we, we're about to get it in. I know you're about to shine your light. And and what I read off for short and sweet, can you share anything else about yourself that you would like the audience to know? I'm just a regular person, man. I know. I know you gave me all those accolades. Sometimes the bio can be pretty, uh, uh, like kind of. It kind of puts you on a pedestal, right? Like, oh, oh my gosh, he did so much stuff. But I tell y'all right now, I'm just a regular old dude, right? I still make mistakes. I still put my pants legs on one leg at a time. Um, if I can figure out how to do them both at the same time, that'll make me a little bit more productive. But um, I'm just a regular dude, man. I'm excited that, uh, like you said, it's it's that we have the opportunity to give back, share some insights, share some values of uh, some things that I've learned and hopefully inspire somebody else to make a change and become a better version of themselves. So I'm excited to be here, Chaz. I love what you do. I'm excited to be on the show. And uh, yeah, man, I'm ready to rock and roll with this thing. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much. And I know, again, I know you're doing some phenomenal stuff moving into 2021 as or continuing into 2021. But can you just uh, go back what did all this start? What did all this ignite for you to get to the point where, you know, I love the theme, man, uh, Unlock Yourself. I know that's the title of your book, to to get to the point to where you're confident of helping other people unlock their potential. So can what's the back? Can you show your story a little bit more with the audience? Absolutely, man. So 
I, I love, I love, like I said, I'm glad you gave me an opportunity to share the little bit of a context before we get into content, right? Because it always makes sense to learn from somebody and kind of know a little bit about their background. And uh, you mentioned a little bit on it uh, in, the, in the front end, but I was born and raised in Baltimore, born into a, uh, a poverty, a poverty stricken family, right? We dealt with poverty for generations upon generations. And um, my dad left when I was probably about nine, eight or nine years old, which forced my mom to take care of me and my brother on a $13,000 a year disability income, right? Wow. So when you talk about being broke, we was broke, broke, right? Yeah. And uh, when you think about just, just this whole thought process of unlock yourself and what that looks like, I, you know, obviously growing up in Baltimore City, you get hit with all the crazy stuff, right? Like, you know, you get hit with the, the basically the three choices that you think you have in life, which is being an athlete, being some type of entertainer, rapper, dancer, singer, something like that, or selling drugs, right? That was pretty much the three options that you had, at least for me. That's what right. I thought growing up. Um, but the thing is, I love the fact that when you look at Unlock Yourself and that entire brand, I believe that everybody has the seeds of greatness already inside of them, right? Dude, that's but it's it, our man. job to plant that language, seed man. in that environment that will allow you to grow, right? Dude, so that's, that's, that's really the background, man. And like I said, I came from a... A pretty, a pretty rough background. Um, I, I wouldn't say me. I didn't get into a whole lot of the issues and troubles and stuff of the environment that was around me. However, um, it was, it was just, it was just a struggle, bro. You had to figure it out, and I'm thankful to be where I am today and uh, being an example not only for my boys but for future generations to come. <laughs> Dude, thank you for sharing that. And I know you talked about being an athlete. Uh, I thought it was interesting, man. Even when you know on our conversations off camera and, and looking into some of your work, man, you was actually the first athlete in your high school to get a D one scholarship, man. Congratulations on that. That's, that's a really big accolade, right. there, man. Yeah. Yeah. What, in what position did you play again? Absolutely. I, I was, a, I was a defensive tackle. So I was, I was the fat boy crew all day long, you know, <laughs> focused on trying to get sacks on the quarterback and TFLs on the backfield. Right. And, um, but yeah, it was that. That was definitely it's a great accomplishment of mine. But the way I look at it, Chaz, and, you, and I know you're pretty, you're really the same way, bro. But I'm trying to find more, right? I want to mm. help more people in the same situation. I want to have more D1 athletes come out of my high school. I don't want to be the first and the only, right? I'm okay with setting the trail, blazing the trail. But at the same time, I feel like the the real attribute of success is not really there until you start helping other people accomplish that exact same thing. Right. So mm. uh, I'm glad that so you brought true. that up, but it's, it's, that's just a, it's, it's kind of like burning inside me. Like we got to find some more people because the school has the talent. We just got to figure out how to actually get them into the D one program. <laughs> mm. That's it. That's it. And uh, I know you say you play that D tackle. I play linebacker. So much love to you, man. I love my D tackles, man. I, I keep you on. Yeah, let's team, go. Man. <laughs> And y'all keep us clean. Absolutely. But yeah, man, we got to so, free you up, man, so you go fly around and make those sacks. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely, man. So, I, so shout out to you on that, man. That's, that's really big stuff. But, um, yeah, man, I feel like you, you said a lot, and, and I resonate with a lot. Uh, and even going back to that whole mindset, whenever you was mentioning how, you know, you know, the theme of it uh, growing up, you know, in the poverty environment is just uh, the option is playing sports and, and being that entertainer. Right. That that whole mindset, that was all the options that was left out there. And and, and don't get me wrong. man, I love sports. I love uh, being an athlete, and playing football. But I'm with you when like you're at a point in your life now where, yes, you know, you want to encourage our young people to play sports, but also to know that, hey, you can achieve other things. You know, let's have those conversations about being a doctor or being a lawyer or, you know, because because a lot of times in, in those uh, poverty environments, man, we're not really having those conversations because there's not a ton of ton of doctors or lawyers or, you know, therapists uh, hanging around. So but, hey, like you said, those see that see the greatness is already inside of you. And and, and you're just such a blessing, brother, because you are watering those young seeds saying, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. Hey, if you want to be that doctor, go be that doctor. If you want to be that lawyer. I know I'm helping on that example, but go be that. And right, right. man, that, that's that's what we got to do, man, uh, in our environments for sure, and back in our schools and our communities at our workplace. So again, man, thank you for what you do. And I know there's somebody on here that's kind of like, man, well, what does Eddie do to stay in his lane of empowering other people, his family, you know, growing? 
And like you mentioned earlier, man, there's more to get done. So can you share like what what are some of your, you know, rituals or routines that you do on a daily basis to kind of keep yourself on the right track to keep striving towards your greatest version of yourself? Absolutely, bro. That's a that's an incredible question. That's an incredible question. And I think anybody who's listening right now, I think you need to just like stop whatever you're doing and focus in on this. Right. Because I think there are honestly three things that keep me filled up all the time, right? Mm -hmm. I had a mentor of mine early on, Chaz. He told me, you can only give an excess of what you have, right? Mm -hmm. I like that. So that means you got to continuously be filled up with positivity, continuously be filled up with the right things so that ask you questions or people come to you with a concern or people come to you for advice, you can continue to give them good things instead of like not having enough for yourself either. Right. right. And uh, it's, it's three things. Like I said, I do every single like I, I focus on it. One of them is the proper association. I only hang out with positive people. Right. <laughs> I only converse with positive people. I only jump on podcasts with positive people. Right. Because right. The, the whole thought process and the, and the environment that you start to create around yourself and the people that you start to hang around it has a huge impact on whether or not you're going to create success or you're going to go down a rabbit trail, right? right. So association is huge. you got to start finding people who are in a standpoint of life or where you want to be and, and, and fight with them, right? They're, they're interested in not – I wouldn't say they, they need to be interested in 100% in what you're doing, but they have to have the same ambition level or above, right? They have to have – um, the, the integrity, the honesty, the character, right? But surround yourself with those type of people and that association by default is going to continue to fill you up so you can go and pour into other people, right? Another one of it is listening, okay? I don't listen, like, at this point, I, in my past, I listen to music all the time, right? <laughs> now, I learned to replace my, my listening of music to, with podcasts, right? Different people, different leaders, business owners, coaches, people that have mindsets of success, and then continuously just sharing it and dumping it out on podcast episodes and things like that, right? So you got to start to figure out how to start listening to things that's going to move you forward, listening to people who say that you can, right? If there's mm. teenagers listening to this podcast, listening to the show right now, I think you need to seriously start listening to, like, say if you want to be, like Chad said, if you want to be a doctor, go find a doctor podcast, right? More specifically, go find a doctor podcast that grew up in the same environment that you did and still became a doctor. If you want to be an entrepreneur, go do the exact same thing. Find other entrepreneur podcasts from people that basically went from something from nothing to something. And it's going to continuously fill up your mind like, oh, I can do this. This is not something that's like so foreign and impossible because somebody else already did it. And if they already did it, then you can possibly you obviously can do it. It's not a possible thing. You can. You just got to claim it. Right. Right. So that's number two. We already talked about association. We talked about listening. The last thing, and I know some people are going to run at me or groan at me, but it's reading. Right, it's just read <laughs> that's books. a good one, though. Man. It's necessary. <laughs> I know you have faith. I like to always dive into different devotionals and things like that. So I'm continuously filling myself up, nurturing myself with the word, because uh, I feel as though, again, out of the abundance, out of, out of the abundance of the heart is what the mouth speaks. Right. So you got to mm, continuously like read the things that you that you know is going to give you fuel. Right. You start to. You, it, I love the uh, the phrase. It's like garbage in, garbage out. But I also call it, I take the G and switch it around. I say God in, God out, right? Oh, because if you continuously like feed yourself, <laughs> nurturing yourself on what you need to really go out and succeed and, and, and achieve the goals and dreams and things that you really want to achieve, then you got to start putting that stuff into you, man. You got to start reading. I'm not talking about The Hobbit. I'm not talking about, <laughs> you know, Animal Farm. If they still put those inside of their school curriculums, like go read something that's actually going to inspire you to get closer towards your goals. So I'll be honest, I didn't like The Hobbit. I didn't like Animal Farm. I didn't like those books. But when I started reading like self-help books from John Maxwell and Dale Carnegie like, oh and my God. Hill, I was like, bro, what was this at? Like, why wasn't this inside the curriculum? You know what I'm saying? So when you start reading, you start to reveal you to you. And when you reveal yourself to yourself, it's no limit on what you actually can achieve in this world. So those are the three. Real quick, association, reading, and listening. <laughs> If you continue Dude. to fill your you fill yourself up with those three things, then you'll always be able to pour into other people. <laughs> Dude. Dude, that that's such that's such 
uh, gold, a lot of meat there. Whoever's tuning in right now, I have my man, Eddie Thomason. He's on here diving deep on the theme, Unlock Yourself. And he just gave some amazing value. If you just now tune it in, let us know that you're there. And go back and listen to the replay of this. <laughs> go ahead because he, he just gave <laughs> three amazing points on some tips and techniques, rituals that you can take and apply to your uh, life right now. Take that daily challenge. And I'm going to read them back off. Association, listening, and reading. And there's so much, man. We can talk for hours on each one of those, <laughs> to be honest with you. But um, this is what popped in my head. Uh, you know, after rereading that off, you know, I, I use the analogy of water when I'm thinking about relationships. You know, they can either nourish you or they can drown you. Right, Eddie? Uh, there's drowning relationships out there that's not healthy for us. And there's some out there that nourish you. And, and, and going back to what you were saying, getting around people who are positive, who are speaking life into you, not death, you know, and. And I love that God in, God out, man. I, I, I got to remember that I never, I heard the garbage in, garbage out before, but I, I, li I like how you, you kind of put that in because that's so true, man. What you're taking in, eventually, man, that's what's going to come out. That's what the world's going to see. And gosh, I know you mentioned John Maxwell. He, he, he's an amazing guru guy. Definitely catch up, get one of his books because, you know, he preached a lot in his book called Leadership, who, Leadership Whoever's Listening. Check that book out if you in any type of leadership. But uh, he talked about, you know, how we should constantly seek to get uh, around people that are ahead of us. And I love what you said about the doctor, man. And and if you're looking out, going back to the whole listening aspect, finding people that are ahead of you and also have some similar backgrounds from the environment that you lived in. Man, I thought that was gold because I didn't really look at it that way you know what i mean yeah because obviously we want to get around that success but really understand who you're listening to and what their story are uh is or or is absolutely because you know that's going to ignite you to be like man he came from the same environment that i did man if Chaz can do it. I can do it. Eddie can do it. I can do it, man. He came from the same situation and look where he's at. He's ahead of me and he's, he's, he's showing me, man, that it is possible to get to this level. So yeah, man, that's really good stuff, bro. It really is. Absolutely, dog. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to throw it on that list too. Cause I know you mentioned John Maxwell and you missed uh, leader shift, right? Yeah. Um, two, two John Maxwell books is just two of my favorites of all time. If you pick up the 15, Irrefutable Laws of Growth. Mm. Incredible book, okay? Like, you're a personal growth podcast, Chaz. I know you probably picked up that book before, but it was oh, it was life-changing for me, dog. Like, just just through an understanding that it's a never, it's an unending process. It never ends for you to keep growing, right? Keep moving forward. Keep getting yourself better. Um, you never arrive at some, at some destination, right? Like, success mm. is not a destination. It's a journey. Boom, and that journey it. is a continuous <laughs> journey of growing you and locking yourself, right? So I think that's a huge that's a huge one in itself. The other one is sometimes you win and sometimes you learn, right? Mm -hmm. One of my yeah. favorite books of all time is by John Maxwell because I think some people, um, especially our younger generation, you're, you're afraid of failure, right? And I love the way that the book is written on the, on the cover because it says sometimes you win, sometimes you fail, but it's crossed out and learn is over top of it. Because people, again, they had this thought like, oh, man, I'm a, if I fail, then all is over. Well, I'm going to let you guys know something right now. You only get to success if you embrace failure, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a visual. Dude, dude, you got to say, that, say, that, going, say that one more time, Andy. Somebody, somebody need to hear that again, man. That, that was deep. <laughs> say that one more time. Listen, <laughs> listen. I'm going to tell you right now. Y'all got to embrace failure if you ever want to get to success okay? dude, i'm gonna give you a dude, visual man. because again i feel like this visual itself hit me hard when i first saw it so i need y'all to kind of just see this for a second right because most people have this idea that if you take a line right most people think that they stand in the middle of this line and failure is on one side and success is on the other side of this line right where honestly, that's just that's incorrect. They think like, oh, if I keep if I make a bad decision, then I fail, and and that now that I failed is is done, it's over, right? But that's not the case, right? The whole the, I want you to take your take yourself 
and put yourself at the end of this line now, right? I want you to put yourself in the back end. And then think in the middle of this line is failure. And on the far side of this line is success, right? Mm. Because you have to travel through failure to get to success, right? So the sooner you start to embrace the fact that you have to fail, you need to fail, it's a part of success, then the faster you're actually going to become successful. Stop being afraid to take risks. Stop being afraid to tell the people around you who are small-minded and thinking like, man, like I don't know if I can do that. Share your dream anyway, right? Mm. If you say, hey, I'm going to the league, but but buddy down the street is just like, no, nah, bro, that's impossible. Hey, or if you're thinking like to yourself, I'm going to be that doctor, but everybody in your family never did it before, right? So you got auntie that's like, boy, you ain't going to be no doctor. You're going to be <laughs> out here in the streets like everybody else. Rebuke that, right? That's not your life. You don't have to accept that. What you expect about you is so much more important than what other people expect about you. And wow. embrace that failure that's in the middle and get yourself to the success that you deserve, bro. It's, so, it's only a part of the process. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, man. He, he, he's, he's heating up, man. He's heating up. He's already on fire, man. You're there already, man. That's good stuff. That's really good stuff. And, dude... Even talking about podcasts, going into yours, the, the curse breaker, man. I, I love the title of your podcast. And what's coming to mind, this question is, so using that title, the curse breaker, thinking about a young male that's listening to you or, you know, there's parents, coaches, teachers that listen to this podcast to get more influence to to encourage young men uh, to mm -hmm. overcome. Let's just use that curse, that curse breaking that curse is there a tip right. or technique that you can provide to help you know encourage that young male to to break that curse uh that generational curse let's just stick on that and encourage them to get to where they need to be uh academically also uh unleashing that full potential uh that god had placed already inside of them what comes to mind when you hear that absolutely big dog so i i think so here's 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 where that comes from right i had a um, a coach of mine who basically said, whatever you don't overcome, whatever obstacle you don't overcome, whatever generational curse you don't overcome, whatever uh, chains you don't break in your life, you pass that down to your kids for them to figure it out. Mm. Right. And when I heard that, I was like, God dang, bro, it's, it's so true. So when I say when I, the curse breaker podcast came from that thought of I need to break as many generational curses that was passed down to me so that my sons and my daughters, I don't have any yet, but my daughters, when I do have them, right? <laughs> I needed yeah. them to know that they're already beyond that curse, right? And they can move on and start breaking other stuff, right? Like, for example, uh, poverty was passed down to me, right? I don't live in poverty anymore, right? Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Basic, basically infidelity in marriages was passed down to me. I, I don't have infidelity in my marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's just so, it's just so many things that was just passed down generation to generation to generation, and 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 I realized like no, you know what? Everybody keeps on having this thought process of like oh it, it, it like it runs in the family. You ever heard that phrase like it runs yeah. in the family? Like oh divorce it runs in the family, being obese it runs in the family, diabetes runs in the family, blah 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 blah, right? Well, here's the phrase that I want you guys to understand. I want you to adopt it. I want you to claim it. I want you to start screaming it every single morning in the mirror when you, after you brush your teeth, whatever it is. But you start to say, hey, yeah, it ran in the family until it ran into me. Right? Oh, man, I Once like it that. ran into me, it's done. It's ghost. It's <laughs> gone. It ain't, it ain't a part and affecting my family from this point forward. Right? It's over. So that thought process of becoming a curse breaker and learning the things that has been passed down, the, the, the deficiencies or so that has been passed down from generation to generation and not accepting that as your own fate, not accepting that as like, oh, well, my mom said that that just runs in the family. So I guess I guess I got to deal with that for the rest of my life. You don't. Right. You don't. God, God came, Jesus Christ came, and he basically died on the cross to, to get rid of everything. By his stripes, we are healed. It, so it doesn't matter what it is that's been passed down from generation to generation. You've already overcome it, right? It's just your, it's your turn to walk it out. you got to stop allowing those, those small little subtleties into your brain and just sitting inside of your subconscious and believing that. you got to challenge those thoughts, man, because it's, it's in the end, you already won. The battle ends with you winning, right? He wow. knows the plans he has for us, plans to prosper us and, and to, and to, and to uh, not harm us, but give us hope in the future, right? Mm -hmm. You have to accept Jeremiah. that. You got to stand on that truth 
and know that all those other curses are already broken. You just got to move forward, bro. <laughs> Dude, that is so true. And I like what you said there at the end. We got to challenge those thoughts, man. And we got to have leverage. So at times, man, I can I can use leverage questions, man, to whereas I don't know why, man, my kids has popped in, in mind for me. Uh, it, it's kind of like, well, my two girls, man, when they can uh, be, be, be drive me crazy, uh, so to speak. I think about my friend because he got five kids, man. And it's like, man, he got five kids, man. I only got two, man. I can overcome this. Like, this is, <laughs> uh, but, but leverage questions. And like you said, challenging yourself that, hey, man, I do not want to stay in this position. I don't want to keep this curse going. There, there's going to be better fruit in the future for myself, for my generation that I'm creating. And yeah, man, we want every generation to get better. So, yeah, man, I, I really like that, brother. I really like uh, how you put that in context and and running with it, man. The curse breaker, man. That, that's, that's really good stuff. And and whoever's listening right now, check out the Curse Breaker podcast, man. Uh, this, this guy, man, he, he he's bringing even more value on that podcast. So you won't you won't go wrong listening to that. But that's 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 good stuff, brother. And um, Gosh, man, so, so much has been shared already. Obviously, gifting a gift. So I mentioned earlier that the model of this show is we're all gifted differently to make a difference. Um, physically, I feel like we're a gift, but that you said see the greatness, man. And I remember when we first got on a conversation and you said see the greatness. I was like, man, uh, uh, I truly resonate with that, man, because that's what I say and I live by, man, because I believe we all have right. that seed, man, that image of God inside of us, right? Mm -hmm. he, he, breathed, he, breathed, he breathed that uh, breath of life inside of us. And, and that seed, when properly watered, man, it brings fruit for it. And, you know, exactly. I love using the, the qualities that scripture tells us what the fruit of the spirit is. And that's love and joy, peace, patience and, you know, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. And whenever you're truly serving that fruit, man, in your area of gifting, that's what should show up uh, mm -hmm. for others to benefit from and to help other people gain and prosper towards, you know, evolving their fruit, if that makes sense. So. Absolutely. Last last question, man. Leave us out with some encouragement for whoever's listening right now to encourage them to become a gift uh, and a gift, bringing their gift to pass and to shine their light in whatever area that they're listening to you from. What comes to mind, man? So it's great that you say that, Chaz. And first of all, I just I just want to say your entire concept of being a gift and a gift, right? Because we are we are all gifts. We are all gifts, and uh, a lot of us don't understand that. We don't accept that. We don't believe that. But it's true, right? You you are a gift. You are a blessing, and you're and you're here to bless others, right? Um, and my my encouragement, to be honest with you, man, is like never never I guess uh, take for granted an opportunity to be positive to somebody else. Right? I like that. Like, and it could and it could be something very simple. It's very simple as a as a as a fact of like complimenting somebody instead of tearing them down. Right? I know you say you got a lot of teenage listeners and things like that. Don't get me wrong. When I was in high school, I can clown on dudes with the with the rest of them, right? Like with everybody else. But the cool thing is, you know, as I as I grew older and things like that, I take every opportunity in life, every single day, to just be like, you know, if I like somebody's shoes, like another dude's shoes. I'm like, hey, bro, I like your shoes, dog. Where you get them from? Regular conversation, right? Or if I like somebody's watch, I'll tell them I like their watch. If I like their shirt, if I like their blazer, I'll compliment people. And I obviously, I'll get some weird looks like, bro, what are you talking about, dog? Like, why are you complimenting me? <laughs> That's perfectly fine, right? But I'm, say I'm saying it because how many times, like, people just need encouragement sometimes, right? People, and, and they don't, know. sometimes people don't even know they need encouragement. They could be having a rough day. They could be having a bad day. They could be fed up with something that's going on in their job or at home or whatever, right? In the classroom, whatever it may be. But you being a person to, to stand and be like, hey, I'm going to choose to be positive every single day by just complimenting somebody and telling them like, hey, bro, I like this or I like that. I think I think that alone is going to help you as, as a person, one, develop people skills, right? Because everybody likes to be complimented. Even if they all don't know how to accept that compliment, everybody loves to be complimented, right? Um, but 
outside of people skills is also going to help you just develop your genuine ability to be a blessing to others, right? Mm. Be, be that genuine ability to be that gift to somebody else on a daily basis. I find opportunities for that all the time, man. It's like I just look around, uh, not necessarily, I, I was about to say for an excuse to compliment somebody, but it's not an excuse, it's a reason, right? Mm. It's a reason yeah. to just be like, hey, man, I noticed you. I see you here. I'm acknowledging your presence. You're valuable, right? That's what a compliment says to somebody, especially when they're a stranger, you never met them before. So that's what I encourage people to do all the time, man, is just find a reason to go out and tell somebody like, hey, I acknowledge you, man. Like, I like your shoes or I like your shirt. I like your haircut. I like this. I like that. Right. And just and just be a blessing to other people by just spreading that positivity because you never know what they're going through. You never know uh, what's going on in their own mind. Right. You, you might be the reason why that person decided not to take an attempt on their own life just mm, because you complimented so true, their man. haircut. Right. Yeah. And, it, and some so people true. don't understand that, but it, it's so true. Just take that opportunity to be like, hey, man, I acknowledge you and I appreciate you. So that is uh, I know that was a little long winded, but that is definitely something I encourage people to do on a daily basis. <laughs> no, nah, brother, there's no better way to put it than the way that you said it. And I'm glad you uh, brought that up w within that encouragement moment. Um, yeah, those compliments are so key. I don't know how many people that. They told me, like, hey, man, thank you for what you said. Like, it really helped me out. Thank you for being nice to me. And even, like, I know we're kind of getting away from because we we wearing the mask out in public, but just smiling at people, man, when people passing by, just, just, just smiling. Right. And, and sometimes that's all you need to do, and, and that can brighten someone's soul just to see your smile. And, and that could be a source of encouragement. And even if you are with the mask, you know, those eyes squint up, you know what I mean, when you're smiling. So it's still effective. So, yeah, yeah, definitely those compliments and smiling. Exactly. Dude, dude, that's some really good stuff. That's gold, man. That's gold. You dropped the mic, Eddie. You did. <laughs> he dropped the mic. He dropped the mic. That's it. But, hey, brother, man, this has been such a hey, treat. Hey, man, I'm just a vessel. <laughs> hey, that's what it is, man. We, you're a vessel, and you're definitely a conduit, man, serving others so that they can advance and become their greater version. So um, I, I truly believe that, man. And gosh, man, I, I'm just so excited to see uh, what's more to come with Eddie. And I know whoever's tuning in right now on this theme, unlock, it, unlock yourself. Uh, my man, Eddie Thomason, he's gave uh, a tons of value. Uh, definitely check this gentleman out. I want you, Eddie, go ahead and share what you got coming up in 2021 moving forward. Also, your contact information. I know there's people that's listening right now that wants to reach out to you, find more of some of the things that you've got work, uh, going on uh, right now. And I know I mentioned some. I sprinkled some throughout this episode. But, hey, can you just right. take some time and share some of your contact information and what you got going on? Uh, moving forward. Absolutely, man. 2020 is the year of prosperity. I'm going to be honest with you, man. Uh, like we got, we got so many things that's, that's, uh, that's in the works for 2021. And, um, yeah, bro, we, we're, we're excited. Me and my wife actually run a couple other businesses. So we got, we got our, uh, our, our woodworking business. That's actually prospering really well. That's ET Woodworks. Uh, we, we, that literally just started in November and, uh, we are, we are, literally growing faster than I can keep up with stuff. So yeah, that's man, pretty dope. Actually with that, um, you, but outside you, of that... Yeah, with that, man, so what type of wood ahead. is that, man? I know I'm throwing a monkey right in there, but I know, yeah, you do do the woodwork, man. Is that <laughs> is, is that a certain... Uh, any any type of carpentry, or how does that work, man? Um, share that with them as well. So a lot of times, I mean, what I've been focusing a lot on is just cutting boards. Like our entire theme, as, as you probably could uh, figure it out, I'm a huge family man, right? Like I love family. Family is the most important thing to me. So my, my entire theme of the woodworking business is inspiring families to come together and make memories, right? Because mm -hmm. in today's world, a lot of times families are so broken. They got so many different things going and maybe dad's working, mom's working, but kids are going out to play sports and they're doing this at school activity or whatever else and like stuff just going on so like i like to have this idea of okay i'm building tables i'm building cutting boards i'm building things that requires families to come together and either play games share a meal communicate have a conversation with each other so those family ties can be stronger the communication can be stronger amongst the kids and you can raise up your kids so they can go out into the into the world and be better communicators and be able to just 
you know, vibe with different people and, and, and encourage other people to talk. So that's a that's a huge part of the woodworking side of things. Like I said, that's that's fairly new though. That is something that is uh it was just kind of like a passion, pandemic hit. I was like, all right, well, <laughs> I'm gonna just go it's not a passion, I'm gonna say a hobby. It was a hobby. Pandemic hit, and I was like, all right, I got I'm gonna go piddle around in my shop a little bit and uh push kind of shove. And then next thing you know, my wife I, I did some cutting boards, my wife posted the cutting boards online. Um, and then once she put it on Facebook, I, I, I got like 12 orders in the, in the first 24 hours. So it was kind of crazy how like it just kind of came up. But again, I, that's a God thing. You can't you can't predict that. Right. Yeah. Which is one of those things yeah. that just kind of popped up out of nowhere. <laughs> so uh, but outside of that, I do got another book in the works. So we writing uh, we're writing another book. I, I don't know the title of it yet, but I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. The thought process behind it is helping athletes specifically transition into becoming business owners. Wow. Okay. Athletes becoming business owners. Just because I think it's funny because I had, when I became an entrepreneur myself, like a real entrepreneur, right? I, I didn't realize that I already had all the keys and habits of success from playing sports. And I just needed to carry it over into being a, an, an entrepreneur, right? Like I think we all as athletes completely just, just are oblivious to the fact that success principles are universal, right? Mm. So all the commitment that you have when you play your sport, all the uh, the work ethic, the tenacity, uh, just the mindset, the mindfulness of, of learning, right, and educating yourself. Like all of those things are things that we did when we played sports, but it was like you become an entrepreneur, you're like, what the heck am I supposed to do? Yeah. All the same things. You just apply it in a different arena, right? So that is, uh, that's, that's the basis of the book and where it's going to be coming from. Uh, but it's in the process of being written, and I'm excited. I think I'm trying. I'm trying to launch it uh, by the end of November, going into December is 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 my idea. But we'll see how that works out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I, I'm excited. I'm excited, man. I, I love to to jump in and, and uh, uh, read that. I know that's going to be definitely some fruit, some value that's going to be provided for the athletes and. Dude, that, that's that's gold, man. I'm excited to to hear all that what you got going on. And again, thank you so much for coming on GNG podcast. This has been a phenomenal episode. And gosh, you know, a little Isaac Newton says he said, "If I've seen farther than others, it's by standing on the shoulder of giants." And I, I know I mentioned earlier, man, that you're a giant. or seeing further by standing on your shoulders. And I know you're like me, man. You're a vessel uh, led by God and and I know you're going to continue to, to be that, that willing vessel to help bring our next generation to the next level. So, again, brother, thank you so much for being on GNG Podcast. And, and gosh, man, uh, I'm so happy to be in contact with you and, and have uh, this brotherhood, this fellowship. All right? Absolutely, my man. And thank you so much for having me here. To be honest with you, Chaz, man, this is uh, – I never take these these opportunities lightly. I never look at it as, as like I said, as a uh, – as like, oh, I was supposed to be here or whatever else. I, I'm, I'm just a humble dude, right? So I feel as though uh, you reaching out and first of all, shout out to Dom for connecting us, oh, right? Because sure. Dom is the is the key to connections. That dude is always connected to different people. Yeah. And uh, first of all, like I said, so in, in 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 conjunction with that, bro, like what you're doing is incredible value, and and I and I just want to thank you for doing what you're doing and sticking to it, committing to it. And, uh, and, and living it, man, because that's really the thing. Like, obviously, our kids need to hear different examples of, of people that they can become and the success that they can create, but they need the examples, right? And they need more black male examples like yourself, being able to go and chase and pursue a dream and showing people how that's done. So thank you for being you and pursuing this vision, pursuing this dream, and being a vessel like you said, my man. <laughs> All right, brother. Hey. Hey, thank you so much, man. Thank you for for your words and and your intentionality yourself. And I'm gonna lead us out, brother. Um, I told each and every one of you, episode 44 was gonna be phenomenal. Again, drop in the comments that tip or technique that you're gonna take and apply to your lifestyle, well being. Also, let us know how we can serve you, be a value. And I want each and every one of you to stay up with GNG. More episodes coming soon. You know what I'm about to say, but do two things for me. Keep that crown on your heart and remember this. We are God's echo. I love each and every one of you. Peace. 
listening to G&G Podcast. Remember, you are gifted differently to make a difference. Please visit ChazJacksonSpeaks.org and let's continue to grow together. God bless.